Hi people, uh, frequently when I cover a particular chapter and uh, discuss the nature of the joints that are generated, the student asks me, do you really have to have these joints? My response is not necessarily because the same mechanism can be simulated with different kind of joints as long as it functions the way you want it and performs as you expect it to, to do, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, in fact, if you look at the uh, chapter one of the textbook, you see that all the joints are discussed, uh, but uh, some of these problems can be uh, done with a, a multitude of other joints that are put together. To give you an example, here's a situation that I would like to discuss. It's a very simple problem. Basically, we have this cylindrical, uh, uh, say, uh, this cylindrical uh, uh, yellow uh, yellow object that is moving in that track. What I would like to do is to simulate this particular problem using different different ways. So I'm a, for simplicity, I'm assuming that uh, this uh, beige or brownish type uh, uh, part is actually the ground that is fixed, and uh, this is the one that's moving. So let me uh, uh, cancel this. Uh, all right, the parts I've already made. All I all I did was to make sure that the the radii, the curvature of this, uh, uh, the curvature of this uh, yellow yellow object is the same as the curvature of the brown one. That's one. That that's one. All right, let's uh, assemble them first of all. There are no assembly constraints here, so I'm going to say uh, actually, you know what? I'll leave it like this. I go to generative. Uh, I, I I go to uh, the digital markup and create the joints manually. Okay, so I'm not going to use the assembly constraints uh, uh, for that purpose. So digital markup, DMU kinematics, and let's uh, anchor the the ground. That's what's fixed. So here you click on the anchor, and of course it says that there's no mechanism here. Would you, would you like to create it? The answer is yes, and then select the the brown object, and it's going to ground it right there. And we have a fixed part now. And of course, we have a mechanism. Okay, no joints here, just a fixed part. My first approach for solving this problem, creating this joint, is this is, uh, is to create a revolute joint between them. So you click on the revolute joint. So axis of this. Uh, uh, brown uh, brown object and the axis of the yellow object doesn't matter which one we pick and the plane bring this thing back and the plane the surface of that brown object and the surface of the yellow object uh, there is no offset here because they're uh, flush so we say okay Good. That's it. So if you look at the joint that is created, it's a revolute joint. Degree of freedom is one. So you can make this thing angle driven. All right. And still go between the zero and, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, 50 degrees. Okay, the mechanism can be simulated and you can automatically simulate it. There we are. I wanted to go to the other direction, that's okay. So there. So a single revolute join did this job. Now I'm going to stop this, rewind it, close it. And I'm going to delete this joint, the several joint, I'm going to delete it. Okay. Now let's do it a different way. Let us do it with a point curve joint. So we have a point curve joint between this curve and that point. Now, if you're having a hard time picking that point, let's hide this uh, 
uh, hide this uh, brown uh, ground, brown uh, object, and select that point right there. And we say OK. OK, where is that thing that I hit? Right there. Now, notice that the degree of freedom it says is 4 because, yes, this point moves along that curve, but this brown, uh, this yellow object can, uh, can wobble around, just lift off the ground, etc. So let me create a plane, a plane join between that surface and this surface. Okay? That means that they have to stay flush. So it's okay. All right. It says the degree of freedom is two because notice that this point, this yellow object, can actually move along that curve, and these two surfaces can stay flush. However, this yellow object can actually move horizontally and stay maintain these as a flush configuration but uh, not along that track. So let's see. Let's do another one. Let's create another, uh, create another uh, uh, joint here. So another point curve joint. This time between, for example, that curve and that point. And OK. See what we got. Well, it says the degree of freedom is still 2, so obviously that did not help a lot. Uh, so let me, uh, let me, uh, let's actually figure out what's going on here. So uh, double click on this, make this thing angle driven. Double click on this, make it angle driven. Make, it says mechanism can be simulated, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work because these joints may be locked somehow. You see, nothing happens. It should have worked, but it doesn't. So let me go ahead and delete this last joint that I created. Delete this one. Okay, this time I'm going to make a point curve joint instead of between that curve and this point. I make it between the curve on the left at that point. You might say, well, what difference does it make? Well, we'll find out. So click on it, click, click, select that curve, and we want this point. Say OK. All right. Look at what it says. It says there is a there is a distance between these two that is preventing it from creating that uh, that joint. Fine. So let's go ahead. If we can fix this. It's a very tiny distance, but it won't let you do that. So let's uh, go ahead to assembly design and put. Now, I, I don't exactly know why this happened. But yeah, we can see that. You see this? There's some kind of a gapish gap there, perhaps. All right, let's try to force it. So we create, we create a coincidence between this point and that curve, or uh, well, let's try that surface. I don't know whether it actually did it or not, because we did get some warning messages updated. Let's see what happens. Well, I'm not sure. Maybe it did. Maybe it didn't. Let's go to digital markup and try to create that same joint that we had before. So a point curve joint between this curve and that point. Remember last time it says that you can't do it. So let me hide this actually because I'm having a hard time picking that. Right. See, last time it says that there's a gap between them. There's a distance between them. So I did go to the assembly design, made a constraint between this point and that uh, uh, surface on the top so that essentially it looks like the gap has been closed. Let's bring this thing back. And see whether we can do that. Degree of freedom is zero, obviously, because we made this thing uh, length driven. You can see that. And uh, let's try it. Just, just give us some time. That, there we are. Right, it works. 
So the first time we did it with two, uh, with a single revolute joint. Then I did two point curve joint and a planar joint. But the point curve joint that I picked on this side did not work. Just the system got locked. So I changed that to the curve, point curve joint, another point curve joint on the left side. It said there was a gift distance, so I closed that distance by, uh, you know, uh, using coincidence or updating the assembly, and it worked. So let me let me go do that a different way. So I'm going to delete this last one. We still have a point curve joint, the original that I created. This time, I'm going to do, let's try slide curve joint. Let's see, slide curve joint. Where is that? Slide curve joint. Between, well... Uh, let's try this curve and the curve there. Let's see whether that works. No, that didn't help. Okay. Although in principle, the slide curve joint should have done the job because there's no reason this curve is sliding on the other one, but still will not be able to will not be will not enable me to create this. Okay. Anyway. I just wanted to point out to you that to create this mechanism, there were different ways of doing it. And some of the ones that should have worked, it just either got locked or in this particular case, you can see that it's not it's not functioning the way it's supposed to. But the, the bottom line is that sometimes you think that a, a particular set of joints is reasonable and you're right. In fact, your intuition may be right, but... Uh, uh, it just will not work when you try to uh, to uh, implement it. All right, folks.